A few years ago, if you wanted a compressor style watch, your options were a bit more limited. These days, not so much. And especially when it comes to micro brands, as that seems to be one of the trends over the last few years. And this one right here is one of the best compressor style watches I've seen. It's the Giant Stride by Second Hour Watches. Second Hour is still a relatively new micro brand, as this is only their third watch. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you'll probably remember that I'm a big fan of their first two, and I've already covered both of them. But in the short amount of time they've been around, they've been rather successful, to the point that with the Giant Stride, they're completely forgoing the whole Kickstarter campaign and will be selling directly on their website later this month. So for those that don't like Kickstarters, this is definitely one to pay attention to. And before we really jump into this, I do need to tell you that this watch is a prototype. So all your standard prototype warnings apply. And there may be a scratch or two on it just from it making the rounds with other reviewers. Some aren't as careful as they should be. Now that said, let's dive in and check it out. So with the Giant Stride, we're looking at a 42 millimeter wide case with a lug to lug of 46.7, which these days I'd say is fairly standard for a diver and should fit a wide variety of people. You're also looking at a total thickness of around 13 millimeters. And that's 13 from the very top of the domed sapphire with AR to the back of the embossed case back, which may be a tad tall for a watch with a Salita movement. But as far as compressor style watches go, I'd say that's on the thin side. Rounding everything out, you have 20 millimeter lugs, 200 meters of water resistance, and a very solid weight of 160 grams on its bracelet. Plus, the production version should include an extra scratch resistant coating, just to keep your stride looking sharp. On the wrist, the giant stride feels substantial, but it's not overly tall or wide. With my seven and a quarter inch wrist, I think it kind of hits that Goldilocks spot where it's large and in charge, but still pretty comfortable. So physically, I think it stays very true to that 42 millimeter rating, but visually, I think it has more of the presence of a 43. The finishing is great as it has these very sharp transitions between the brushed and polished surfaces. And that includes a chamfered edge on each of the lugs, as well as the very top of the bezel has this polished platform. And that helps bring even more focus to the complicated dial underneath, which is once again further enhanced by the slight distortion provided by the domed sapphire. So it's not very tall, but I think it does enhance the design just enough. Over at the right, you have the dual crowns that you typically find on a compressor style watch. The top crown is for the bezel, while the bottom crown controls the movement. Both of these are screwed in, signed, and loomed up for a very nice touch. The crowns aren't very large, but I think they're just big enough and textured enough to always be able to get a good enough grip, at least with my medium-sized fingers. And I have to say that I'm actually very impressed with the bezel action here. Like you'd expect, it is bi-directional, but it has this really smooth movement to it, and there's still just a touch of haptic feedback as you rotate it. Best of all, it's very easy to screw back in after using, which sounds a little bit odd, but one of the issues I've run into with other compressor style watches is that sometimes the bezel likes to turn as you're screwing it back in. Where here, that was never really an issue. Just push the crown in a little bit and it starts to screw in nicely. Then moving to the back of the watch, we have the embossed case back, which is complete with all the particulars as well as an image showing off the watch's namesake, which is the giant stride. And that is one of the techniques divers use to enter the water. Which probably doesn't sound very complicated, and it's really not, but wearing fins makes things always a little bit more difficult. And if I really wanted to nitpick it, I think technically the guy should have his hand over the mask on his face, but I don't think that would look quite as cool. And speaking of cool, let's start talking about the dial. As far as dials go, this is gorgeously complex. It's basically divided into three different sections. Now, obviously this is the green version, but there are gonna be three other colorways to pick from. And all of them have this matte textured center dial, which I believe is actually supposed to represent the waves of the ocean. Now, beyond that, you have a raised platform, which has applied wedge indices. And there's these circular grooves that go in between those indices. And all of that is right before you get to the sloped internal bezel. For some, and especially those that like more cleaner, straightforward dive watches, this may be way too complex. Yet for others, that gorgeous complexity is one that's gonna suck you right in. Which, if you've watched the channel regularly, you know that's pretty much where I fit in. There's a lot here with the giant stride that I just love. 
but there's also a few things that bother me, so let's just take this point for point. First off, I love the intricate and meticulous nature of the design, as well as it's just beautifully executed. I think these macro shots just speak for themselves, and especially with the laser-cut hands. They're very sharply defined, and those red tips stand out nicely against the green backdrop. The date window at the 6 is also an excellent choice. It lines nicely up with the text on the dial, and blends in more or less with the indices. I also love how cohesive the design is, and that's something I can't stress enough. I'm a big fan of compressor-style watches, but one thing that's always bothered me is a lack of cohesion between the dial and the internal bezel. It seems like they're typically designed where the bezel winds up acting more as a frame surrounding the dial than an extension of it. Which oftentimes makes that timekeeping center section and the hands that it contains seem rather small in proportion to the case size. And that's simply not the case here. The bezel actually looks like a continuation of the dial, which winds up giving the watch an even larger than life presence. And that, I think, is rather significant for a compressor style watch. For whatever reason, I've gotten three compressor style watches recently to review, and all three of these are the first that I've really seen do this and do it well. So as a side note, if you love these kinds of watches, keep an eye out for the Mitch Mason Maelstrom I'll be reviewing soon. It's more of a contemporary design compared to the Giant Stride, but it's also an excellent compressor. Anyway, let's get back to the Giant Stride. And like I said, there are some things here I really love and a few things that I don't. And the biggest problem I have with the design is that I think it lacks any sort of center focus a crosshair effect, if you will, or something that really draws your eyes right to the center of the dial. There is the circular pattern that goes around the indices, and that does frame in that center section nicely, but personally I tend to find my eyes being drawn more towards the wavy pattern in the text around the dial than the hands itself, which might be due to that asymmetrical pattern on the center section of the dial. The mandala has a little bit of a similar setup framing the center section, but I never really found that to be an issue there. And I think it could also have something to do with just the sheer amount of text on the dial, which is something that they said that they are working on changing, and they did show off some renders of a more streamlined dial design. The other thing that concerns me a little, and to be clear, this is a really big nitpick, is that I don't think there's quite a clear connection between this and their first watch, the Gin Clear. The Mandala, I think it's pretty obvious, but the Gin Clear, not so much. One of Second Hour's key design characteristics has been emphasizing the 12, 4, and 8 indices, rather than, say, the cardinal points. It's kind of a simple thing, but it's a very interesting, unique design characteristic that really separates it out from the pack, as well as it kind of creates this triangular crosshair that really focuses your eyes right to the center of the dial. With the mandala, they kind of toned this down a little bit, but it was still very obvious when you looked at the chapter ring. Where here, it's toned down even further. I mean, those indices are still a little bit bigger, but it's not very noticeable unless you're actually looking for it. Now, to be fair, this might actually widen their general appeal with watch collectors out there. But for someone like me, who's a fan of their other two watches and that particular design, I can't help but look at this and think there's something missing. But let's move on to the loom, and it is surprisingly impressive. Most of the other compressor-style watches I've seen only have so-so loom, but Second Hour went the distance here, and with blue BGW9 Swiss Super Luminova. As not only is it initially nice and bright, but the dial and hands outperform a Seiko Turtle. So this should be one that can go all night long, and at the moment, I'd say it's the best loom I've seen on a compressor. Now, Second Hour has used a couple of different movements in the past. They started off with the Gin Clear using a Sleda SW200, then later on used a Miyota 9039 in the Mandala. And for the Giant Stride, they decided to go back to that Swiss Salida. Now, overall, it's a great movement, and it is very fitting for the price point. However, while the Salida is generally more respected, I can't help but feel that maybe they should have tried to go with a Miyota 9015. As with that movement, they might have been able to reduce the overall thickness and bring the price down just a little bit. Plus, the power reserve is just a little bit longer. As for the bracelet, the bracelet is excellent. It's an H-Link bracelet that I think matches the Giant Stride's Thule aesthetic. It starts off at 20, but then has a slight taper to 18 before it hits the clasp. You have solid links secured with screws, solid female end links, and a very nice milled clasp. Plus, for the final production, it should have that same scratch-resistant coating. 
like I said, it's overall an excellent bracelet and pretty much what you would expect at this price. It's also extremely comfortable with the fully articulating H-links that easily wrap around and conform to your wrist. Overall, I think Second Hour hit this thing out of the park. It's something that's a little bit different. It's a watch that defies convention with its gorgeous, unique, and surprisingly cohesive design. For some, this may be the perfect compressor style watch. The only real trick I see with this one is in terms of price. Now, I think there's going to be a launch pricing of $615, but after that, it's going to jump up to $725. So you can see that this is a fantastic watch, but it's one that you are going to have to pay for. I'm sure part of that is just from the intricate design, as well as part of it is just because Australia is a little bit more of an expensive country to do business than other areas of the world. And that's not to say that it isn't worth it. I mean, everything I'm seeing here suggests that that's a fairly reasonable price for a fantastic watch. It may be a little on the high side, but I still think it's reasonable. Rather, the complication that I see is that there's a little bit of a disconnect between the price of this watch and their previous two. You see, older, more established micro brands are typically fueled by their fans, who come back time and time again to buy whatever their new release is. I think the Kickstarter pricing for the Gin Clear was about 400, and the Mandala wasn't really much more than that which for me personally is kind of the top end of the affordable watch spectrum. And this is a step beyond that. And because of that, I think this watch might leave some of their previous fans behind. Those who may be a little hesitant to take that leap off the boat, which is kind of a pity. But for those that are willing to take that leap of faith into the ocean, I think they'll be very happy with the giant stride. It's easily one of the best compressor style watches I've seen with just a fantastically unique and beautiful design if that's even actually a word. But what do you guys think of the giant stride from second hour watches? Make sure you let me know down below. Or if there are any other interesting compressor style watches you're thinking about, let me know that as well. And as always, you guys know what to do down below. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. See you next time.